It was a beatdown in the Rose Garden once again. The Sacramento Kings put 138 on the board against the Portland Trailblazers as they pick up their 47th win of the season. 138-114 is your final. You're watching Kings Post Game Live presented by Toyota. Everyone, Kyle Draper, Kenny Thomas. We'll hear from the players. We'll hear from the coaches. We got the up-to-date Western Conference standings coming up in just a minute. But first, Kenny, they handled their business tonight, man. Man, they came out and did that thing, even though they were expected to win. But the way that they came out with all of that energy was nice. And then they ran away with it right. in the second <laughs> half, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that the Kings are there and they're ready to be reckoned with. But the crazy thing about it is when they were interviewing Chauncey Billups there for a second, Chauncey, who is the head coach for the Portland yeah. Trailblazers, he was like, hey, back in the day, the playoffs were slower. But there wasn't a lot of great offense. But now the game has evolved and changed to where the offensive side is the more dominant side. But the fact that the Kings are good in that category just need to get a little bit more efficient on the uh, defensive end. So 138-114 is the final. A number of Kings had big games, including Malik Monk. Here's Malik with Mark and Kate. Right, joined by Malik Monk right now. Malik, what does it mean and what does it say about this team that – after clinching a playoff spot, you guys came out with good energy tonight and handled your business again when you could have easily let go of the rope and go back home tomorrow. Yeah, man, uh, just give kudos to Mike, man. Mike stay on us well, not, but, um, by not um, slipping, man. Um, he, his word is slippers, and um, he, he preached that a lot. And every time we come out here on the floor, he preaches that. So we try not to um, have many mistakes. We started off a little slow, um, picked it up in the second half. So uh, thankful for the win. Four guys tonight, Malik, with 20 points, including you off the bench, leading score two nights ago against this same Portland team. You guys, as a unit, so unselfish, play the right way. How important has that been for your guys' success throughout the season? Yeah, man, uh, we never know who night is it. Uh, it might be everybody night. It might be Foxes. It might be Domas. might be mine. It might be HBs. might be Kev. might be King. So that's, that's, that's just us, man, being a basketball team and not, not being selfish, like you said, um, and, and just wanting to win. And we all want the same result, and that's to get to the playoffs and go deep in the, in the playoffs. Malik, tell us what it means to you for you to be on a squad now that's going to be in the playoffs and what it means for you and your journey so far up to this point. Yeah, man, uh, I, I've been wanting this uh, my whole six years, um, and I'm thankful I, I did it with Sacramento, um, changing the culture, doing it with my best friend, Fox. Um, yeah, man, this it, is amazing. Um, everybody want to play basketball to play in the playoffs, so um, I'm just thankful to be a part of this. It, there's a sense about this team that you guys are not done. You're not going to let up. You're not going to kind of start resting guys, prepping for the playoffs. Harrison Barnes has said, hey, our goal is 50. Where are you guys in terms of, hey, we got a lot more to do before we start that postseason? Oh, yeah, definitely. We want 50 wins. <laughs> we wanted 50 wins. We said that. Um, but, man, uh, we're going we gonna to get as many as we can. We're going to come out here and play this, the right way. Um, try not to be selfish, like you said earlier. Um, and just win basketball games and, and just just be solid so we can get to the playoffs. Hey, Malik, thanks a lot for joining us, man, and uh, good luck moving forward. I think, I think there's an ice bath waiting for yeah, you. I, I got to get, yeah. yeah, get that. Yeah, I definitely got to get that. Yeah, uh, Malik Monk going to the playoffs for the first time. You know he's excited. Kings get that win, 138-114. We'll talk about Malik coming up in a second. But it's that time, big fella, to light the beam. That's light right. that thing. The beam is up. It is bright over Sacramento. It's brought to you by Northwest Exteriors. Simply the best. Trust Northwest. And the beam is lit for the 47th win of the season, Kenny. And let's start right there with Malik Monk. We just heard from him. Came off the bench, 20 big points. Uh, what did you think about Malik and, and his value to this team going forward? Obviously, Malik is a huge value to this team because he's a guy that's coming off the bench. He was right there in the position for six man of the year. We don't really know what's going on with that yet, but the fact that Mike Brown has given him the green light to come off the bench and be aggressive, I like that because Malik is a guy that can light it up real quick. He had a couple big games this year. But the fact that Malik has been very consistent, and I love the fact that how he's attacking the basket. I mean, he had just got hit in the privates. I don't know how he did that spin <laughs> right there, but he's a guy that has a lot of a lot of energy, I think. And the way that he brings that energy off the bench, I think that is the fuel that is keeping the bench going because not only does he come out there and play well, but I think his personality right. is like, 
it's out there. Like, you can hear it. Like, he's a big man. Right. He's one of the emotional leaders of this Sacramento Kings squad. Let's yeah. get to social media right now. Let's see what you guys are saying out there on Kings Twitter. Nick Avila, longtime Sacramento Kings fan, says Purdy Kings with two assists in the first half. Monk has dished out 285 assists off the bench this season. The most assist in a single season by a reserve in franchise history. Wow. Surpassing Larry Drew. How about that? Wow. Malik Monk. Who knew wow. that he had that package to his game? I mean, we saw him, I mean, we saw him last year play in LA. And he was all, he was good, but I, I feel like he was being held back a little bit because not only, once again, this is a guy that has a lot in the tank, especially on the offensive end. But once this team really gets it together on the defensive end, I keep talking defense because that is going to put right. them up here and being able to advance not just the first round, second, or third, but mighty, maybe all even right, farther. I'm going to hit you with something because you, Bring you're it. saying all kinds of stuff. The show is kind of ass Bring so far. It. So I'm going to jazz it up a little bit. I'm going to jazz it up a little bit. You say <laughs> when we get there defensively, dog, we had game number 77. Yeah. The defense is what it is, right? I mean, you, you, you keep hoping and praying that all of a sudden we turn into the Pistons, <laughs> the bad boy Pistons or something. That's not going to happen, Kenny. Well, I don't, I don't see that happening. I totally agree with you. But you are saying we're like 70-some games into the year. But defense nowadays in this game is a huge part. It's not a focal point anymore like it used to. That's why I said, based off of what Chauncey Billups was saying, the game has totally changed. And – you got to get back to certain principles. That's that old school mentality to a certain extent that Mike Brown brings to the table, yeah. especially with these new kids in this new generation. What principles do you want to see from this squad? Like, what, what do they I, need to do defensively? That's a great question. Think? My thing is, only thing they got to do is be on the string. Okay. One guy Everybody rotates ever. Huh? Everybody right. got to connect. Right. But that's obviously not going to be the case because they're human and they are going to make mistakes. But the more that they can play together and know that they have that guy, back there counting on them. Right. I don't think that they don't think that that person's back there, but it's a little different when you really, 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 really know. know that person. Yeah. Back there. All right, so the Kings get the 138-114 win. Time to fox around and find out. And De'Aaron Fox, 27 minutes tonight, 20 points, eight. This dude nearly had a triple-double, Kenny. Not even trying. Yeah, eight rebounds and 11 assists. Not even trying, Kyle. Like, this guy, he had five rebounds. I love when De'Aaron Fox has five rebounds because they are a smaller team with some bonus at the five. But the fact that Lynn is coming in and getting some minutes, that's nice right there because that's another big body, and I feel like that's going to take a lot of pressure off of some bonus. What do you think about De'Aaron Fox and just uh, down the stretch here? Are we going to see more games like this where he, he doesn't need to go out there and throw up 40 or, you know, this is kind of light work for him in a game it's like tonight. It's real light yeah. work. But 20 points, eight, eight rebounds, <laughs> and 11 assists, that's not real light work. Like, those are those are great numbers, great numbers but right. not great for Effortless, a guy like him. Though, right? yeah. Effortless. And the level he's playing on, you expect him to do more, but people, just relax. We still got post Ain't nobody coming. tripping, yo. Ain't nobody tripping. No, that's why I'm telling See, that's them that at false home, narrative relax. You no, 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 no. Uh. <laughs> Very positive narrative. <laughs> All right, where are we going next, man? What we got coming? All right, let's check out the Western Conference standings. My Sacramento Kings, 47 and 30, <laughs> Kenny. Two games behind Memphis. I tell you what, Golden State had some trouble tonight with San Antonio. And don't sleep on the Lakers either. They're moving up. They're seventh now. When you look at this, Kenny, what stands out to you? What do you take from this right here? What stands out is the Lakers are in seventh. Now, if the Kings end up playing the Lakers, this is what we were talking about before we came out here. They're bigger. Mm -hmm. And that's where rebounding and the guards are going to have to rebound and crack back. But... Golden State, I mean, it could be one of those games that's probably going to be a shootout, right? But don't sleep on New Orleans. New Orleans has been playing very, very great basketball. You know, I'm looking at these standings, and everybody's talking about, oh, who do you want to face? Who do you want to face? Phoenix right now, if Phoenix loses, the Kings will uh, win the Pacific Division title. Right now, Phoenix is in the lead, however, over Denver. But I'm looking at those standings, dude. Phoenix? Yeah. Clippers? Golden State, Lakers, Minnesota. I'm scared of everybody in the West, dude. I am. And everybody else should be scared of everybody in the West. I am to a certain extent because there's a lot of guys that have been hurt. Reed is a guy that's out in Minnesota, which is a huge factor when it comes to the inside game. 
which is what I've been talking about as far as rebounding and stuff. Minnesota has come in and owned the Kings, yep. but they beat the Clippers. They beat the Lakers in L.A. Like, the Kings have even gotten to the point to where they're 17 over 500, man. Like, what? I mean, that's been unheard I agree. Of. I agree, Kenny. So, 40, so let me ask you this, though. What's up? Because you and I are on this post-game show, mm -hmm. and we're saying, man, the Warriors, they're going to be tough. The Clippers are going to be tough. Do you think other post-game shows are saying, Ooh, I don't know about them, Sacramento. I don't. I don't know if I want to play Sacramento. <laughs> Here you go. You, you see Here what I mean? Go. Man, you know the disrespect Sacramento's been getting right, because right. it's one of those things. It's like when you haven't been around, it's like out of sight, out of mind. That that is legit. And the fact that the Kings are bringing the recognition back, mm -hmm. it's like okay, well, when when is it gonna shift, right? Like how many times do they got to make it the postseason? But at the same time. The fact that we're sitting here talking about the Kings and who they're right. going to play, man, last year we were waiting to get up out of here. <laughs> Dude, we already had our <laughs> off-season plans picked out. But here's the thing about Sacramento. Nobody else may respect the Kings. Tell me why they should, though, Kenny. They should because the Kings are uh, – Chauncey Billups also said it's an easy game when it comes to offense. The Kings are putting up 120-something points a game. Like, that's, that's up there. They're very efficient on the offensive end. One, because a lot of the things go through Sabonis, because right. Sabonis, he's playing the five, but he's not a true five to me. I think he's more of a four because of the flow of the offense and how everything goes. And I think with him being out there in the perimeter and helping the guards to be able to get yeah. them in better situations because he's always, if it's a dribble handoff or if it's a handoff or whatever it may be, the guards coming off and Sabonis is like that in between person to get to the shooter he's either a screener or he's doing something well let's talk about the dominator right now two assists shy of a triple double in the kings 138 114 win and here we are game 77 uh five more games left to go yep. and this guy he's still playing at a high level this dude is like no days off like bill belichick used to say no days off with demonte sabonis there really isn't because it's between him and fox Fox still had 20, and this is a guy that's having, he's had so many double-doubles this year, it's becoming contagious, and he's always flirting with the triple-double, and he always has the ball, and he's always involved in the offense. That's where he becomes the dominator that he is, because he's he's excelling in, in every position to a certain extent. I mean, he's a big man. He's playing like a guard to a certain right, extent. Right. And the big fella can step behind you, you, the perimeter. You like it when he, he grabs the board and goes? I love you, it. You wish you could have did that. Man, I did that. You, you better did that? Google. Uh, you better Google. There's this thing called Google, Kyle. Right. Oh Kenny God. Thomas, YouTube. I even got a video on there. I could just ask Alexa or Siri. Do that, too. <laughs> I, I, I ain't going to play you right now. I go, but, but you like that, though, when, when he grabs it and goes. Yeah, because when, when you have a big, or even if, if there's a five or four that can do what he does, because that helps the guards to be able to run the lanes. They run the lanes, run for layups, dominator coming down the middle. Yeah. Once they cross and they're running for layups, it depends on where Domas is to where the offense is going to flow off of that. Mm -hmm. And once he, once he hands it off or whatever he's going to do, yeah. you notice he's always rolling. Yes, yes, always uh, creating a target. So the Kings I got get excited the right there. I know, question, I know. Kyle. I was about to uh, Google you, man. Check your stats. 138-114. <laughs> Pull out the hard hat, big fella. It is that time. K-9's hard hat. Who are you giving it to tonight? Edwards, man. This is a guy that, once again, I know I keep talking about defense, people. You're going to start not liking me saying defense all the time. But he was 4 for 7, 15 minutes, 2 for 4 for 3. That means he's taking shots and being aggressive, which is good, because obviously he's a guy that they don't necessarily respect from behind the perimeter. But once he gets even more comfortable, I would like to see him attack the ball more, even though that was a great pass right there. But this guy is doing a lot of different things. But... When it comes to the guard position, he's filling in at a nice, I mean, excuse me, he's filling in at a nice role from the standpoint of coming in and being a great guy that can help contribute on the defensive end because they do lack that from the perspective at the guard position. Has he solidified his spot in the playoff rotation, you think? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, he ain't going nowhere. All right. He ain't going nowhere. I would be very surprised because, right. once again, this is a guy that plays defense. Not that the Kings as a whole don't play good defense, I just feel like they can get better, especially staying on that string, yeah. playing together, 
the offense, I'm not worried about offense. No, no, we're not no. worried about the offense. They dropped 138 tonight. Keegan the Murray, they dropped the 20. Hey, we're moving on. We're not talking no, about No, hold up, man. Hold we're up. We're moving on, big man. fella. I want to talk about my guy, Keegan Murray. He got new merch <laughs> out there. He got the all-time three-point record for a rookie. This dude is flowing right now. He had 20 points tonight. I like the way Keegan is. He's coming within his own. And you could kind of tell in the beginning of the year that he was a little shy and trying to fill it out, I think. But now he's a guy that's coming out there being very aggressive. Like, there's no way that he should not take a shot like that, especially if a guy's running at him. That's that confidence he's building up. And the fact that he was able to put the ball on the floor and be aggressive, I think that's where Keegan is going to be really good because he's long, he's athletic. Wait until he gets to that point to where he's, he's dribbling in and pulling up and taking that mid-range, mid-range shot. shot. Larry Brown used to tell me, that, Kenny, why are you always come to lane and you spin? I'm like, because I'm smaller and there's guys in here that are bigger. And he's like, yo, Kenny, they don't know when you're going to jump and shoot the ball. I was like, coach, that makes a lot of sense. I did it a couple times. I was like, yeah, this way. <laughs> That's money, right? <laughs> All right, Keegan Murray, 20 points. Let's hear from the rookie after the game. Yeah, I think uh, especially games like this when they're missing a lot of guys, um, it could lead to – like relaxation, uh, things like that. And credit to them, they played hard, um, hit a lot of shots. And uh, I feel like the way we ended the game is how we need to play for the whole f- 48 minutes. And um, I just feel like if a lot of guys buy into that uh, in our locker room and we all know we can do that, uh, we'll have success. Four guys scored 20 tonight. Um, so what does that say about kind of the balance of this team and how important is that to what you guys are doing? Yeah, I feel like our offense is, really, is flowing right now. Um, I feel like we're getting the ball, so the ball to the right guy um, at the right time, and every guy is making plays. So um, we all have 100% confidence on that on the floor, and it's, it's really fun to watch. Was that your second time winning the chain? Yeah, I won in, in December, um, so it was a long time coming for sure. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel like your games like transitioned defensively over the course of the season? Yeah, I think I'm I'm reading the ball well. Um, off the ball, I feel like I've made a lot of strides um, chasing guys and. Um, reading passing lanes, things like that. Um, I feel like uh, in ISO situations, it's the area of of growth I need to get better at, uh, and I'm willing to get better at it. Um, So I feel like um, the more um, more experience I have uh, doing that, um, the I feel like my ceiling at that end can can, is is pretty high. So. How much you get pushed on on that end of the floor? Like, what is Mike asking of you? Yeah, I don't think anyone asks me anything about offense. Um, It's pretty much just all. All defense and uh, every coach is trying to work with me um, and putting tidbits in my ear um, just about how I can get better. Um, I always talk to Doug Christie, Dutch, um, at, when I come out of the games to see um, things I could work on, things that they see on the floor. So it's been it's been good for me, and I feel like I made growth in that in that department. Where do you feel like you're, you're making the biggest strides in that area? Uh, I think it's just passing lanes. Um, in college, I was good in passing lanes, and in the NBA, I was just kind of figuring that out um, when I can get steals, when I can gamble, and things like that. And um, that's led to, I've it's led to some open fast breaks for me, and um, just willing to get better at that, and also keep my keep my chest in front of the ball. How would you characterize the just the bond and, and kind of the togetherness that, that this group has right now? I mean, does it feel like it's just getting stronger every day? I think so. Um, I mean, just every day I feel blessed to go um, and play with these guys. I mean, some people call it work, but I feel like um, none of us think of it as work. Um, we all just love being together, um, love being in the gym together and things like that. And um, it's really fun uh, to be there every single day with them. Um, Alex Lane's getting some run lately um, and kind of getting an opportunity in that backup center spot. What are you, what are you seeing from him and, and you know, how, how nice is it to, to see in the locker room a guy that just stays ready? And, yeah, I feel like he's the ultimate teammate. Uh, I mean, even when he wasn't playing uh, this year, uh, he's been a great teammate to me and a lot of our other guys. And just to see him have success, uh, especially these last two, three games, has uh, been really cool to see. Um, he's a guy that is long, he's athletic, um, can affect some shots in the paint. So I feel like uh, the better he plays, um, the more count he plays, the better it will be for us. All right, that's Keegan Murray coming up next. That's right, Alex Lane. He played well tonight, gave the Kings some minutes. We got to watch your head segment after the timeout. Kings Post Game Live is presented by Toyota. 
world-class leading MPG, and more hybrid models than any other brand. Toyota, let's go places.